this column, this table here collects a number of fundamental properties of the various chondrite groups. In the first column are the various chondrites. So here are, for example, first the carbonaceous chondrites, then here are the ordinary chondrites, the ansatite chondrites, and then the rumrutis and kakangaris. In the second column, which is quite interesting, are the type metrites after which, in case of the carbonaceous chondrites, the chondrites, the chondrite groups are named. So for example, for CI this is Ivuna, for CM Murchison or Miguel, or no, Vigarano, and so on. And for the ordinary chondrites, the chondrite groups are not named after um, type metrites, but after high iron, low iron, low iron, low metal. And this is actually also true for one group among the carbonaceous chondrites, which are the CH chondrites, they also have the H for high iron. And the anti chondrites again is high iron, low iron, and rumrutis and kakangaris are named after well, these type metrites again. Then the following columns are the, the fundamental properties. So for example, the number of chondrules. Chondrules, one of two major um, components. The second is matrix, as can be clearly seen from this table, as chondrules and matrix together usually make up more than about 90 volume percent of the metroid. So in carbonaceous chondrites, the um, chondrule abundance is typically around something like 50 percent, plus or minus a little bit, except for CI chondrites. CI chondrites almost have no chondrules with maybe below 1 percent. Then the others always have something like 50, as you can see here, um, close to 50. In some cases, there is less, for example, in uh, CK chondrites, which is likely because CK chondrites are typically slightly metamorphosed, so they are of type, type uh, pathologic type 4 and above, so many of the chondrites might have been destroyed, so initially they might have been more. Same is true for CM, they have a lot of um, um, hydrous alteration and some of the chondrites might have been destroyed thereby. The chondro diameters are shown here as well in the fourth column then, and these are highly variable, as you can see here. So they start from as low as just 20 micrometers in the CH chondrites, although this is a little bit a special group. So typically, they are, uh, chondro diameters are between maybe something like 200 micrometers up to one millimeter. Although this one millimeter might be a little high, maybe it's 900 microns. And the matrix abundance, as said, this is uh, the second major abundance, is about, and its abundance is um, complementary to the chondral abundances, so in CI is more than 99%, in CM it's 70% and 20%, so this is together almost 90 in um, something like here, uh, CV it's 40 and 45, so this is 85, so close to 90, and so on. And CI abundances are rather low, so the calcium aluminum rich inclusions, because calcium and aluminum is rare in the chondrites, is about an order of magnitude below magnesium and silicon. Magnesium and silicon um, um, produce olivine, pyroxene, and also feldspars, and this is quite abundant in chondrites in the matrix. And calcium and aluminum, aluminum abundances are about an order of magnitude below magnesium and silicon, which is why CI abundances are also roughly in order of magnitude below, even a little lower as calcium and aluminum also um, occurs, of course, in chondrules or the matrix in feldspars, for example. So the highest abundance is in CV chondrites, about 3, maybe a little more, 4%, and in all others it's around 1 or below. So CI abundances are always quite low. And finally, metal here, and metal in carbonaceous chondrites is rather rare, so maybe in um, CR it's quite high, 5 to 8, then in CH and CB this is anomalous, anomalously high, this is why CH chondrites are called CH, they have a lot of iron, otherwise this is typically below something like um, 5% and down to up almost 0% in these cases of CI or CK, although alteration might have played a role here. Then in the ordinary chondrites, it's a bit, um, there are a lot of similarities, for example, chondrules are all 
between 6 and 80 volume percent and matrix between 10 and 15 volume percent. Quantum diameters systematical difference, so they increase from H to L and LL from about 300 to 900 microns. Now CAIs are really low in the ordinary chondrites as well as in um, Enzatite and Kakangari and Rumruti. So the most about, uh, CI abundances are highest in the carbonaceous chondrites and they're in the CV chondrites. The metal is um, decreases from high iron to low iron, low metal, which sort of makes sense, but there's also sulfide, which is not listed here, so sulfide uh, could obscure this trend, which is seen in the enzyme chondrites, for example, that the high irons in enzyme chondrites have 8% metal, and the, um, in the low iron it's 15% um, metal, but this is due to that there is more um, sulfide, for example. Then um, the so then, then we go to the enzyme chondrites. They have quite similar chondral abundances and matrix abundances as the ordinary chondrites, and there's also different in the chondral abundances or chondral sizes here between EH and EL. Again, the EL have slightly larger chondrules. And finally, Rumruti and Kakangari, they have matrix and or chondral and matrix abundances that are about similar to, from the proportions, about similar to the carbonaceous chondrites. With respect to CAIs and metal, they are about similar more to ordinary enzyme chondrites. So this is how they are different. So these are the, some, some fundamental properties of the various chondrite groups. And um, it's, it's, it's good to have a rough idea about these, in particular with respect to element compositions as well. As said, for example, why are CAIs low? Because of uh, low calcium and aluminum abundances, just for example.